If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, there's this amazing passage that gives this picture of Jesus leaving the glory of heaven, leaving this divine position he had, emptied himself in some, in some mysteri mysterious spiritual way, and coming as one of us to the point of giving his life and then his ascension back to glory again. So watch the descent and then the ascent of Jesus in this passage. Philippians 2, beginning in verse 6. Speaking of Jesus, it says, Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, but not just born in human likeness, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself even more. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, the most bitter, shameful kind of death ever invented by the twisted minds of human beings. Public execution by crucifixion. Stripped naked, beaten within an inch of your life, nailed to a cross in a way that you wouldn't die, but would hang there hour after hour and day after day till you finally suffocated. This is our God. This is the one born in the manger. This is Jesus. And he came, left the glory of heaven, found an appearance as a man, humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And then it goes back upwards. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. This is the resurrection, the ascension, and his present glory. And gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We worship that Jesus now. Yes, he came in the manger. Yes, we should celebrate that. Yes, that's where Christmas begins. But Christmas happens every day in the heart of a Christian. And we worship him and we praise him every single day. So we encounter Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, now. And we worship and praise him now. So some things we learn from this Philippians passage. First, Jesus was, is, and ever will be God. I can't fully comprehend and explain to you how the God of the universe emptied himself in the way he did. It's beyond my comprehension. I mean, I've been a pastor for almost 30 years. I've been a Christian for 35 years. I've studied this and studied this. I can't say, oh, let me make it easy and simple for you. Somehow the glorious, all-powerful God of heaven emptied himself enough to still remain divine and yet take on human flesh and then give his life on the cross for our sins and rise again in glory. He was God when he came in the manger. He's God right now as we worship him, and we will see him revealed as God for eternity. We also see in this passage that Jesus emptied himself for you, so give yourself for him. I mean, think about what this passage says. He who was in very nature God emptied himself, did not consider equality with God something to be clung to or grasped, but he emptied himself. And then it says after he emptied himself, it says then he humbled himself to the point of dying, and not just dying, but dying on a cross. When you gather with God's people like this for worship, when you sit quietly before Jesus and you open the word of God and just spend time with him one-on-one -on -one in the quiet of your home or the place, in your own apartment or wherever you spend time with Jesus, think of this. What did he give? What did he sacrifice? What price did he pay for you to show you his love? He left the glory of heaven. He took on human flesh. He humbled himself and he gave his life on a cross. And then ask this question. What if I were to worship him with the kind of sacrifice and passion that he gave himself for me? Would you worship any different? Do you ever feel like, to be honest, do you ever feel like you're just kind of throwing God's scraps? Just a little, I got a little time. I'll just, when's this going to be over with? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I got things to do. And we can come in the presence of the living God, the maker of heaven and earth, and bow down and worship and celebrate his goodness. And I, and I think, I know I do sometimes. I think we miss it sometimes. We give God a sliver. We throw God a scrap. And he gave us everything. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Jesus so loved you, he gave his very life. And then we come to worship like this or as we walk through our days and just say, God, the way that Jesus came, the way he sacrificed, the way he gave, can I, can I give myself like that?